Hey guys, Micah here from ebikeschool.com, and today we've got another Q&A video. This time, the question is coming from Jonathan Overs asking, how do you do regen on an electric bicycle? Thanks Jonathan for the question. You guys remember how my Q&A videos work. You ask your questions in the comments below. I will choose um, questions every now and again, and whoever I choose to make a video response, I will send you a copy of either my first book, D uh, <laughs> The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or my second book, DIY Lithium Batteries. This one actually has a lot of information about regen braking as well, but we're gonna go over the topic now, so you can learn it this way. Thanks for the question, Jonathan, and I hope that I address all of your different questions here. All right, now, first of all, you asked, is regenerative braking possible on an electric bicycle? And the answer is definitely yes. There are a lot of e-bikes out there with regenerative braking, but you do need the right components to make it work. It's not possible on every e-bike. You have to have the right parts. So first of all, you have to have the right type of motor. The only motor that can really be used for regenerative braking is a direct drive hub motor. So those are the, the big ones. They're usually black, but they're you know, the bigger non-geared motors. You can't use these little geared motors because there's a clutch in here and they're not um, directly driven when you're going forward. These motors coast, so you have no resistance. Um, that's why those big motors, uh, you know, like the Nine Continents and the uh, Crystallite motors, um, the Magic Pies, you know, the, the big motors that, that don't have any gears, they're able to uh, regenerate electricity because you're basically driving them forward instead of letting the motor drive you. When you coast, you're, you're powering the motor, you're pushing it the opposite way. Or when you go to brake and use regenerative braking, you're actually um, engaging the motor and that's sending electricity back out the opposite way to charge your battery. Um, the other thing is that you cannot use a mid-drive system to uh, do regenerative braking. So if you have you know, a BBSO2 or BBSHD or the other you know, popular mid-drives that are out there, that's not gonna work either because again, these freewheel. This time it actually uses the freewheel on your rear uh, bicycle wheel, but either way, you're not driving the motor when you're using either these little geared hub motors or when you're using a mid-drive. So you need a gearless direct drive hub motor. Next, you need some way to engage the regenerative braking. The most common way is to use uh, what are called e-brake or electronic brake levers that often come on e-bikes or they come with e-bike kits. These function mechanically just like a normal brake lever, but um, they also have a little micro switch in there and a couple of wires. So when you pull the lever, the micro switch closes and it lets the circuit know whatever it's connected to that you've just pulled the brake lever. The other option is to use some type of momentary contact switch. This is often a button on a throttle or you can just get a standalone button that goes on your handlebars, but you need some type of button or switch to engage the regenerative braking. The last thing you're gonna need is a controller that also has a regenerative braking option. Not every controller can do regen braking. In fact, I would say probably most of the cheap ones cannot do regen braking. It has to be at a controller that has this enabled. Um, and there's no real easy way to just look at a controller and tell. You can't just look at it and say, oh, this one definitely has it. It needs to be listed on the uh, spec sheet or you can ask the vendor, but make sure you're actually getting a controller that can do regen braking if that's something you're looking for. Now, the way that you connect all this together is, is really simple. Basically, any controller that's gonna have a regenerative braking option is gonna have some connector on it somewhere. It's almost always a two-wire connector, and you're just gonna plug that straight into the two-wire connector on either your e-brake levers or your momentary contact switch on your throttle or any other momentary contact switch. The wire color can basically be anything. I've seen it be red and blue, black and white, black and orange, um, you know, red and white, all just every, every color combination out there. There's no standard for regen braking. Um, so you just have to figure out or ask your vendor which connector on your uh, controller is meant for regen braking, and you plug that into the connector on your e-brakes or your momentary contact switch. There are some controllers out there that are programmable, so you can actually connect those to your computer, and then you can edit some of the settings. You, know, you can e increase the power of the regen braking, um, and you can change some of the different uh, settings there, how quickly it engages, etc. But um, for the simple controllers, you basically just plug in your e-brake lever or your uh, momentary contact switch, and then anytime you pull the lever or press the button, you're going to start regenerative braking. Now, how efficient is regenerative braking on bicycles? And this is sort of the issue that, that I've had a bit of a problem with because I've found that regen braking just isn't that inf efficient on electric bicycles. Um, you know, you see it a lot in electric cars, but cars are much heavier. They have a lot of momentum. And I think it's easier to, you know, pull that energy back out when you've got so much kinetic energy moving uh, that you can convert back uh, using the regenerative brakes. But on electric bicycles, the best that I've been able to do, the, the absolute best on one trip I ever did was I think about 8% of the energy that I 
um, I had an eight percent return of the energy that I used. So, for example, if I used um, ten amp hours, I got back about 0.8 amp hours. Generally, I averaged closer to five when I was in a uh, five percent when I was in a city setting. So, you know, if I'm doing a ten amp hour trip, I got back a uh, half an amp hour. Or for a twenty mile trip, I got back one mile of extra range because of that regenerative braking. And that was when I lived in Pittsburgh, which is you know a city with a lot of stop and go traffic, a lot of um, you know red lights, stop signs, that sort of thing. When I've done uh, longer trips that are just you know on like um, long open roads where I'm driving for a long time, I've had regen percentages at like one or two percent. Because if you're not braking often, you're not going to be using your regen a lot. So what I found is that regenerative braking, it's uh, a lot more efficient if you you're living in like a city where you're doing a lot of stop and go but if you're out you know in the suburbs you have a really long commute with long straight sections you're just not going to get that much return for the regenerative braking now that's not really a problem you know like a free five percent or a free three percent extra range you know that's great it doesn't really cost you anything but um, don't expect it to you know just be this like magical boost on your range because it's not going to make a huge difference um, and like I said, I think a big part of that is just the weight. You know, when you weigh more than your vehicle, there's just not that much momentum there to convert back into, uh, into energy for your battery. Now, there are a couple of concerns that you do need to worry about when you're uh, deciding to go with regenerative braking. The first one is going to be um, the way that it charges your battery. So regenerative braking almost always charges your battery back through the discharge leads. And this is certainly possible. You know, if your battery is a BMS, then the, um, the sort of avenue that uh, power flows out of your battery through the discharge leads is able to handle a lot more current than the avenue that, that power flows into your battery through the charge leads. So you can actually charge through the discharge. Um, you know, you're not really going to be worried about blowing anything or burning anything out, um, except for one specific scenario, which is important to discuss. And this is sort of like an odd, you know, unique case, but consider this. Um, imagine if you lived on the top of a very big hill, or that's where you were starting your trip, and you had just charged your battery up to 100%. So now you start going, uh, you're not using any gas because you're on top of a hill, and you just go downhill for a long ways while using regenerative brakes. So now you're pumping charge back into your battery, but you're already at 100%. So, you know, if this goes on for a few minutes, you can get up to, you know, 101, 102, 3%, and you're suddenly starting to overcharge your battery. Now you can actually overcharge a lithium battery. You can get it up to you know 105 percent or so of what it's meant to charge. Going too much over that can be dangerous. So you really don't want to overcharge a battery. Um, if it's just a little bit, all you're really doing is decreasing the health of your battery. But if you overcharge it too much, it becomes a very dangerous situation, and you risk you know fire, explosion, all sorts of bad things. So um, that's sort of a very specific scenario where someone starts at the top of a hill with a fully charged battery and regenerative brakes all the way down. It's not going to be a common scenario, but it is important to consider just in case this is something that you could run into. The other important thing to consider is uh, a torque arm for your motor. Now, if you are using regenerative brakes, what that means is that in addition to the normal uh, force that you're having turning the axle one way when you accelerate, suddenly when you do regenerative braking, your axle is going to be forced to turn the other way because now you're powering your motor backwards. And so it's a really good idea to at least have one torque arm installed holding the axle of your hub motor. Um, you know, if you don't know what a torque arm is, uh, look it up. They're really important to hold onto the axles for higher power e-bikes. Below like 500 watts or so, they're not super important. Once you get above 500, 750, they become very important. But if you're doing regen braking, they're even more important because now you're forcing your axle forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards all the time. And this can allow it to start loosening up at the nuts and you could actually have your axle slip right out of your bike. So if you do regen, make sure you look into a good torque arm. I really like the ones from ebikes.ca, um, but you know there's tons of different designs out there, and every bike's shaped a little different, so you got to look around at different ones. But um, those are the most important aspects to regenerative braking. Definitely possible, probably not as efficient as you had hoped it would be, but you know it might be a good thing for your bike. And if you can get an extra one amp hour for every 20 amp hours you used, why not? All right, thank you for the question, Jonathan. Uh, make sure you send me a message here on YouTube to let me know which one of my books you'd like, and uh, let me know your address. I'll send it out. All right, now it's time for our weekly book giveaway. Remember for this one, all you have to do is comment below this video. You know, you can um, leave a question if you want me to answer a question. Hopefully I'll choose it for a video in the future, or you can just say hi, but leave some comment and I will choose a random commenter to win one of my two books. Um, and this week's commenter was, I have it somewhere, Matt Bernard. This week's winner was Matt Bernard, who, <laughs> 
um, liked my video almost as much as another interesting crowd control video. So thank you very much for Matt. Um, remember, I'll choose a randomly uh, chosen winner for um, comments on this video to win a book on my next video. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope it taught you a little bit more about regenerative braking. See you next time.